Judd Cobbler, founder and game director of Last Epoch, has just put out a statement talking about Last Epoch. It's a midweek update, and it goes and covers a lot of topics. We're going to dive in to his statement, and after reading his statement, I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about what it means for the future of Last Epoch moving forward. I hope you'll join me and stick around. See you on the other side. Okay, so here's the tweet from Last Epoch. It's been an incredible week since launch with so many travelers joining us for 1.0. Judd Cobbler, founder and game director of Last Epoch, talks a bit about launch and what's next. Hello, travelers. Wow, what an opening week for Last Epoch. We are absolutely floored by the turnout and response to the game. Having started as an after-hours passion project from diehard ARPG fans, we're in awe that Last Epoch reached 265,000 players online at one time this weekend. The number 39th highest concurrent user count recorded on Steam ever. Wow, what an accomplishment for an indie studio. We appreciate you all bearing with us as the load initially gave us trouble for online gameplay, but we're happy to say that we're holding mostly steady above 200,000 players in-game and have made improvements each day in the back-end infrastructure to support the demand. We'll continue to monitor and address any issues that crop up. I want to take a moment to talk to you all about what's coming next. Now, just a couple of things about his comments. Um, it's unbelievable. Their 24-hour peak hit over 265,000 players. They're averaging, at some points, over 200,000 players. And this is during the week, not just on the weekends, like I've mentioned in prior videos. So for the most part, it looks like their server issues, their stability issues are like almost all gone. However, we are steering, still hearing some reports of some issues. So we're gonna continue to monitor how this flushes out. But from his first paragraph of his statement, it looks like they are feeling comfortable with the fact that they've grasped the issue and are able to withstand having 200,000 players playing the game and keeping the service to the service and servers stable. So that is great to hear from them. Incoming hotfixes post 1.0 patches. We have a good sized bugs fixing and quality of live improvements patch that we're hoping to deliver this week and plan to continue releasing weekly patches. In addition to weekly patches, the team will be actively monitoring services and applying hotfixes as needed. Thank you for taking the time to report issues you found in-game with the in-game bug reporting tool. This is the most optimal way to report issues as it also sends us your player logs and a screenshot if you choose to include it, which helps us diagnose and address issues much more rapidly. Forums and third-party sites are a much less ideal way to submit reports as we don't get this information and it's not immediately tracked in our internal system. Wow, that's great, guys. So just to reiterate, if you guys are finding issues and you want to report it, please use the in-game bug reporting tool. It is the most effective way of them looking at the problem, addressing it, the problem, and getting information about that problem quickly and, and the most effectively. So make sure you use the in-game bug reporting tool. Online services is the next topic he wanted to talk about. We are excited to see the services holding above the 200,000 concurrent user mark in the game at one time, and that scene transitions and queue times have gotten much shorter. Hallelujah. There may still be shorter periods of downtime as we roll out updates to improve the reliability after a turbulent first weekend where we had some unanticipated bottlenecks in our backend architecture. Now, I did a video on the backend architecture stuff. If you want to go check it out, it's a techie video, but from a non-techie. Um, and I 
because of that video and the research I did, I'm very curious to see the aftermath of after this is all done, what they're going to say happened and, 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 and share with us what happened. I'm looking very forward to that information. We will continue to make improvements here, including making social services like adding friends even snappier, focusing on scene to scene transition times, ensuring in-game chat is stable, making queues continuous to flow smoother and faster and more. These are all good items that they're addressing. So glad to hear that. We're going to put out some information about what happened at launch. Thank you. That caused the instability under load, but we want to focus our backend team on improvements for a while longer before we pull them out to help us write this up and also give them some much deserved rest after working through the weekend. Uh, really good. And I totally agree. These guys have probably been working around the clock. So get your house in order first, and then you can let us know what happened. Uh, they need to stabilize the servers and the load in times and all those issues 100%. So we're not talking about it anymore. Okay, next topic is localization. Localization improvements are ongoing as we focus on the quality of our transitions and further coordinate with native speakers and quality assurance testing teams. We will be releasing improvements with our weekly hotfixes to address the feedback we have received so far, including quality fixes to all languages, menus, affixes, and UI errors reported for Russian, Korean, and Chinese. We ask for you to continue support in improving our experience in all languages by submitting reports to us via the official Last Epoch Discord. In the localization translation forum located in the feedback and report section under feedback forums or by utilizing our in-game support tool and choosing the category feedback. Okay, so it looks like they're having some issues with the different languages in the game and the UI, so they're addressing that. Awesome. Future content. Okay, the important stuff. Here we go. We're excited to start to share with you the future content plans we have for Last Epoch including our next ma major cycle, patch 1.1. All right, they're already talking about 1.1, the next cycle. This is awesome. The content coming for patch 1.1 is designated specifically in two parts. The first and most important part is focusing on committing time to act on player feedback. We are wholly committed to making the best ARPG in the genre and listening to our amazing community is a big part of that. In addition, throughout the 1.0 cycle, we intend to release quality of life and bug fix patches regularly. You know, I have to say, probably uh, Lost Epoch is known for a lot of things, but one of the top things they're known for is just how they rely on player feedback in order to help them make this game. And it's so refreshing to hear things like this. So the fact that they're highlighting it, like the founders highlighting that is really nice to hear. And this is very impressive that they, I would like, I think the quality of life in the game is already really good, but the fact that they're still want to improve it, just um, that's awesome. And I know a lot of players uh, are gonna enjoy that. Secondly, as all of you may know, we're going to have a heavy emphasis on expanding endgame content now that we've released 1.0. For future patches, we have plans to expand the monolith, bring great new itemization options, add more boss content, class and balance updates, campaign content, etc. For 1.1 specifically, we'll be focusing on bringing some pinnacle content or very hard fights that will give you challenges to aspire to. We'll be sharing more of this and more of what's to come in 1.1 in the not too distant future. It's worth emphasizing that EHG has a strong focus on listening to the community as it's where our team came from. And we wanna hear what you wanna see in the future. We are active in our forums, Reddit and social channels. So if you wanna see something, please do voice it. You are not shouting into the void 
nor do you have to amass an army to get us to take notice. We're there and ready to have conversations with you all. Here, here. And I just want to say two things. Number one, regarding 1.1 and all the updates they're going to do to 1.0 and all the new future content that Judd talked about. Just crazy good. The fact that an indie studio that started from a Kickstarter from a Reddit post is having 265,000 players, 1 million copies sold, and the accolades of a game that everybody's having fun with and that a lot of ARPG quality type things are in the game already. And they're already talking about enhancing that even further is just, I see a very bright future for this game. It's going to be very interesting to see how they evolve this game. It's already sitting on a very good foundation. Um, so they are going to bring, you know, expand the monolith, enhance itemization, more uh, boss content, class balances, but the pinnacle comment, that is what the player base, one of the things the player base, is, player base has been itching for. Like there's really no big fights um, in last epoch, right? Like, yes, there's some bit, there's a bit, couple of big fights in the campaign, um, but the end game needs that boss fight, the pinnacle fight that you have and, and that you want to, like Judd said, aspire to. So this is awesome that this is already going to be coming in the next cycle of Last Epoch. So really, really great news. And the fact that the founder of Last Epoch is basically urging us all to provide feedback because they want to use it to potentially put it in the game. It's just uh, refreshing, refreshing. Okay, sentiment and reviews. While we're continuing to receive high praise about the game itself, Steam reviews and sentiment took a heavy hit due to the initial turbulence of online services at launch. We are committed to regaining that trust by making improvements to our backend infrastructure for this amount of load and providing a great experience for online play. We take time to read your reviews and feedback on Steam, socials, and our forum and take swift action to improve the areas that we see players dissatisfied with. We know that seeing our Steam reviews lower than they've ever been is concerning to players who are looking forward to the future of Last Epoch, but we want to assure you that the team has always been committed to making a game that you can enjoy and expect updates from for years to come. We've seen that passion reflected back at us in the community this past week, and it has bolstered our resolve to the goal even further. Last Epoch is here to stay. Now, in reference to the whole review bombing issue, I, I have a little bit of a take on this, and it's the following. And that is, so currently right now, as I'm making this video, the reviews are still positive on Steam. They're at 72% if I round up. So they're at a 72% rating. That is way lower than what this game is usually at. And it's way lower than how it where it was when 1.0 launched. Their um, their reviews clearly has struck a chord with the team, and it's evident in Judd's statement that they are taking this very seriously. And he mentions things about a lot of the loyal last Epoch players are getting concerned that this percentage is below what normally the game receives. Um, so it's nice to see that he's facing this head on and he's brought it up. He's talking about it. He's saying that they're going to, you know, earn the respect back of these players. But I have a couple of comments to make. Number one, I have no time for people. Like, no doubt about it, this was a catastrophe that happened it shouldn't have happened it did happen 
whatever the issue is, we will eventually find out. But this should have not happened. I don't care. Indie studio, AAA studio. I understand there's always issues that happen with games like this. But if you want to play in the game, then you got to accept all responsibility. And they want to play in the big pond. So that comes with big pond responsibilities. Um, so they're going to have to wear some of this. And they are wearing it. And I'm 100% convinced they ha like they're financially taking a hit. And what do I mean by that is they clearly have lost sales because of it. Because let me tell you something here. Not everybody watches YouTube. Not everybody... Um, watches videos or looks up or watches streams to get information on a game. Some people just go on Steam and the reviews impact the decision making. I, for one, would never touch a game that has a negative review on Steam. Now, if I really wanted to play or was interested in that game, I would dig a little deeper and see if there's anything that contradicts that. Because sometimes... There's just review bombing that it's just trolls on the internet, right? Um, so this is going to take a toll on them. How big? We'll see. I'm convinced they did, like I said, they lost some sales because of it. People that just, they go on Steam, look at the review. They saw that it was mixed or that it was going down or that they saw all these negative reviews, even though it was a positive um, uh, review, like, their, their, their rating was positive. So that's that. So these this Steam review does play a factor. The other thing I want to say in reference to the people that um, jumped on that bandwagon the first day, I again, it's your review. You can do whatever you want. But how, I don't put any weight on games that launch and have issues and they're getting rev negatively review bombed, like that's ridiculous. Because every game, whether you are, you're an indie studio or AAA, every game has some sort of issue at launch, especially with the demand that this game saw. There was 150,000 players that slammed that game the second the doors open. So, um, so that's my take on the review thing. I'm just happy to see that Judd is addressing it head on and they're going to earn your respect. And I love how he communicates his message. He doesn't spin it around back to us and say, oh, you guys should have understood. I can't believe we're getting all these negative reviews. This happens even with triple A's. None of that. Everything is pointed to him and his team. We're going to earn your trust back. Like to me, like, it's just, all I get is, like, this guy's a leader. This is what a leader does. A leader gets in front of his team and his company and says, it's on me and we're going to fix it. So I applaud him for how he's handling this. Only time will tell to see if they can really address it 100%. So more to come. Gamepad support. Okay, so they're talking about gamepad that's great. And that is it. Looks like he finished off with the gamepad support. And he says, thank you all for your amazing support and excitement of Last Epoch. There's so much more to come. And we're thrilled to build this game for all of us ARPG fans. We'll keep you all posted with more news, patches, insights, and plans shortly. Wow. Wow. So there you have it. That's Judd Cobbler, the founder and game develop game director of Last Epoch. Sorry. Um, so a couple of things I want to mention. First of all, I love Eleventh Hour Games' communication style. I I really do. It it it, it is comes off very honest and transparent. Now only time will tell if that's the case. Um, but from my own personal opinion, they do a very good job of managing players' expectations. And it's a very simple formula that I think 
11th Hour Games adopts, and that is we're going to be transparent. We're going to be honest, and it is what it is, and we're big enough to take the accolades, and we're big enough to take the negativity. And we are what we are. You're either going to love us or you're not kind of thing. Now, that's me spinning it, but and, and it's refreshing. I, I've said this in my other videos. It's refreshing to see this. When I read this, my main takeaways are we know we fucked up and we're going to fix it. Okay. We're going to make improvements with your help. Give us feedback. If you have ideas, please send them to us. You don't have to be a big time content creator or a big time streamer. You don't need an army to get our attention. We hear everybody. So please give us because we're going to listen. So they're receptive to feedback. Two, three, they're constantly innovating the game with their future content. They're already talking about adding Pinnacle bosses to 1.1, the next cycle in Last Epoch. Um, it's just, they're not resting on their successes. To me, this is what I took away from this communication. They're not resting idle. It's a constant, because you know why? You know why they can be innovative? Because they're, they have one magic weapon that this company, well, they have a lot of magic weapons in my mind. But one thing that's going to endlessly supply their creativity is us, the players. Why? Because they're receptive to our ideas, right? So it's not just the team of 11th Hour Games trying to think, how can we make this game better, right? So this is their pool of thoughts. Th because they're receptive and they're willing to listen to their players and adopt their ideas if it fits into the game. Well, you're taking this player um, thoughts, ideas from the company, and you're, you're amplifying it a million times, times a million, because you have all the players that are giving you feedback that you actually are listening to and are receptive to. Therefore, your, your idea list is endless. It's just a matter of how can we implement it and how can we fit it in the game and does it work? And we'll, you know, you don't have to think, will our players like it? Well, of course they always think of that because not all the ideas from the players will be satisfying or, or good to all the other players, but you get my point. My point is they'll have an endless loop of ideas because they're receptive to getting ideas. And that's their, that's their ace in their pocket. This is why it's so refreshing to see. And this is why seven days in to the first cycle and the first major step forward from getting out of early access to full release with Last Epoch, seven days, and they've been dealing with server issues, right? And stability issues, 99% of that time. They're already looking and talking about what they're doing in 1.0 and in 1.1 and remarkable this it's remarkable what they're doing and it's refreshing and players are having fun in this game so it's nice to see i love the transparency of this company i love the honesty i love the it's our fault and we're going to deal with it and we're going to earn your i love the word earn we're going to earn your trust back brilliant anyway i just wanted to give you a quick update on this i'm going to keep keeping you update on last epoch let me know your thoughts i'm going to put the midweek update from judd i'm going to link it in the description on the video so you can go check it out and read the whole statement if you'd like but let me know what you think let me know what your thoughts are how are you enjoying last epoch are you still having issues with stability? Let me know what, what you guys are going through. And as always, I want to thank you for watching my videos. And if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. 
The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.